Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Star Bazaar. Today, Battlefront 2 got a community transmission which details the highly anticipated squad system, which will be rolling out in the planned game update this September. This new system will feature the ability to join a squad of four players, create a game group with friends, spawn on your teammates, as well as a spectate feature, and more. In today's video, I'll be reading over the community transmission which contains all the details about this new update and which has some juicy details about a new private match feature rolling out with the squad system. As I go over it, I'll be giving my thoughts on all the new features, but if you're interested in checking out the transmission for yourself, it can be found on the Battlefront forums as well as the Battlefront 2 subreddit. As always everybody, leave your thoughts in the comment below and let me know what you think of what's coming in this update. But with all that said, let's jump right into it. The transmission begins, Star Wars is full of stories where trusted friends and companions adventure together, and Star Wars Battlefront 2 is no different. One of our favorite things to hear about is when a player does something awesome, but it's even better when it's done with a friend or ally on the battlefront. It's these types of moments that we want to help create, and the new squad system aims to do just that. Coming in the September update, the new squad system will allow you to rejoin your friends, allies, and the action much quicker than before. Before breaking down the squad system, we thought we should clarify a few terms that will be used throughout this transmission. The first term is Game Groups. These are formed within the Social Hub menu of Star Wars Battlefront 2. This is the menu found in the top left corner of the main menu and is where you can add fellow players to the group. The next term is Squads. These are groups of four players that enter a game mode together. And the final term is Platform Party. These are groups that are formed outside of Star Wars Battlefront 2 as part of your platform of choice. We should highlight that there is no connection between a platform party and game groups. There is one exception, and this occurs on PlayStation 4, where players can create a game group outside of the game with the Play Together feature. Now that we've defined our terms, let's go over actually forming a group. If you're already playing with a group of friends, either as a game group or platform party, you will be placed together into a squad. If your numbers are less than four, then random players or other groups will fill up your squad. Consequently, if you join a game on your own, you will be placed into a random squad. Squads persist between rounds on the same map, however, new squads are formed when switching maps. When new squads are formed, you will always be put into one with the members of your game group, but if your group consists of less than four people, the random people or other game groups that make up your squad can not change. If you join a game group late and they are already in a game, you will join the squad if there is space. If there is no space in that squad, then you will join a random squad until the maps are switched. At this point, you will join the squad with your game group. And that last point is really great to hear, as it seems like even if you have to wait a bit for the rest of your group to finish a game, if you join late, you'll still be able to meet right back up with them when their match is over. That's a great way to keep players together and make the most out of this new system. So far, I'm loving what I'm hearing, but let's keep going. The next section talks about the spawn system. When you are defeated, you will have the ability to toggle through a spectator camera. This camera will be focused on one of your squad members, and you'll then have the ability to spawn directly onto them. Want to spawn on a different squad member? Simply toggle through the spectator camera until you find the squad member of your choosing. Now this is all great to hear, but there is a small hitch here, and that is the number of modes this will be available in at the start. The ability to spawn directly onto your squad will be limited to Galactic Assault and Strike. The reason why squad spawn is limited to these modes is because we need to ensure the gameplay balance remains intact. It works well for Galactic Assault due to its large size, but from our testing we've found that it can become quite powerful. We will be rolling it out onto Strike as a test case for smaller modes, and the potential to roll it out to other smaller modes is there based on your feedback. Once defeated, you will be given the chance to go back to the class selection menu and spawn immediately back to action once the respawn timer runs out. This is awesome and reminds me a lot of Battlefront 2015's partner system, where you could spectate your partner's actions in real time and wait for the best time to spawn in and back them up. The fact we now have an entire squad to do this with is really cool, and I can understand why they call it powerful. It is a bit unfortunate that it will only be available on Galactic Assault and Strike at the start, but I'm sure after initial testing and the community has had a chance to try it out, we may see it be added to modes such as Blast. You can bet we will be seeing it on the upcoming large scale game mode arriving in the winter. But moving on, this next section is short, but talks about what I'm most excited for, private matches. Joining a 2 vs 2 game mode such as Hero Showdown while in a 4 player group will enable you to play a private match. This is so cool, as private matches are something we have been asking for since literally day one. 
We were all shocked it wasn't in the game at launch, and though this isn't private matches like we probably expected, it's at least a small step forward and does allow us the ability to have private online matches. We'll see how it works out when the squad system rolls out, but I'm personally stoked for it. Drop a comment and let me know if you're just as pumped as me to have those one-on-one -on -one or two-on-two -on -two lightsaber duels with friends. Moving along, voice chat will be turned off for any four-player squads that have been formed at random. You will be able to enable voice chat with your friends through either your platform system or by using the Star Wars Battlefront 2 option. Please note that selecting your platform's voice chat feature will override the in-game option. That's the end of the information about the system itself, but this next section goes over some ongoing adjustments. Due to the online nature of this feature, we wanted to highlight that once it goes live, there is a possibility that we will be adjusting things within the live environment. We have built-in back-end timers that will affect the length of galactic assault objectives, just in case we see certain phases in a map being easily exploitable by either side. For further balancing, we are prepared with several kill switches which will enable us to turn the feature on and off per game mode and per map. This will enable us to react quickly should we find balancing becoming an issue. We will be watching your feedback closely and will be ready to act accordingly once the squad system goes live later this month. With features that are in development, there are chances that things may change as we progress between now and release, but we will keep you posted along the way. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm really looking forward to hearing what you think in the comments below. This is honestly a huge change to the way Battlefront 2 is about to be played, and is probably just as big an update as the progression update in terms of quality of life and user experience. This is about to make playing with friends so much better, and it's something that Battlefront 2 has been needing for quite some time. Other shooters have had systems like this in place for a while, and it really ups the enjoyment factor when playing with people you know. So to bring this to Battlefront 2 is an update well delivered. After posting this transmission, Ben Walk took to Twitter to say the following. This is the first community transmission of this type, where we look to break down upcoming content, features, and talking points. A community transmission isn't just about an update coming, it's a framework, if you will, for talking about things that we think you'd find interesting. More to come. As communication is something that seems to be hit and miss with DICE, this is refreshing to hear. Community transmissions are already nice to have in and of themselves, but to hear that they will now act as more of a breakdown of important and relevant talking points for updates is great. This opens the door for more channels of feedback on the stuff that matters, and also shows that DICE is committing to as much transparency as they are able to. We have a lot more coming in the form of more community transmissions, and one I'm especially excited for is the one that details the general Grievous release in October. Ben also confirms on Twitter that in the September update there will be changes coming to the ping system as well as tweaks and improvements to matchmaking, which should make finding balanced games or for some just finding games in general much easier. Battlefront 2 has a serious matchmaking problem in Galactic Assault especially and sometimes in Heroes vs Villains, where one side will completely steamroll the other, making the game not fun for most players. I've been anticipating changes to matchmaking for quite some time now, and Ben says a community transmission going over them will be released before these changes are implemented. By the sound of it, there won't be anything new to look forward to in terms of playable content coming with the September game update. The new squad system appears to have taken a great deal of time and effort to work on, so we probably shouldn't expect much else for content this month besides this new system. This is disappointing, but per the roadmap, we have the new clone skins to look forward to in the form of the 91st Mobile Recon Corps and the 104th Wolfpack. In my latest news update, I talked about the possibility of a Darth Maul skin and why I think we may be getting one this month. So if you're interested in checking out that video, you can click the card popping up now or by clicking the link in the description. I don't know about anybody else, but I think I feel something of a change in the air surrounding Battlefront 2. Ever since the Elite Core update, I've felt that the player base seems overall happy with where the game is currently sitting, even if it isn't quite where we would like it to be content-wise. All these quality of life improvements are great, and though some may say they would rather have new content being worked on, I think these game improvements are just as, if not more, important. There isn't much point in putting out content if it won't behave properly when played. I'd rather have a functioning game, and the way I see it is if we get the quality of life improvements now, that just leaves more time later for content updates. General Grievous, Geonosis, and the new Clone Wars heroes are just the start, and I'm looking forward to all of it, and I'm definitely looking forward to the new squad system. But that will do it for this video. If you enjoyed this coverage, I'd really appreciate it if you gave the video a thumbs up, and don't forget to leave your thoughts about everything we've talked about today in the comments section below. 
It was a lot to go over, and the new squad system will definitely be a hot talking point in the community for a while, so I'm eager to chat about it with you all. I appreciate you all stopping by the bazaar. If you're new around here, consider becoming a subscriber to stay up to date with all the latest Star Wars video game news. This has been Turkish Delight, and I will see you all out on the battlefront. Peace.